Let's go ahead and pour. I'm seeing some beautiful cell reaction popping up. This is gorgeous. Hey everybody, it's Anna. Welcome back to my Fluid Art channel and happy Easter. For me as a Christian, Easter is one of my absolute favorite holidays and I love celebrating with the church, Jesus conquering death and saving us from our sin. So I love making Easter inspired art. The last couple of years, I've done some Dutch pours uh, that I've then embellished by adding a cross to it. And they've been really beautiful. They've been a little bit more symbolic and uh, kind of like really thought through and, and involved processes. Today's is gonna be just a little bit simpler. Today's, I've actually got this the wrong way. It's supposed to go this way. <laughs> Whoops, I'm so used to working horizontal. No, this is gonna be vertical. So I'm gonna embellish a cross at the end, but the background is gonna be a straight pour. And the colors for my straight pour are sort of these, it's inspired by like the sky. Beautiful, glorious sky with, you know, gold and beautiful clouds. And then there's a bit of purple in there just to add that element of like richness and royalty. But for the most part, it's kind of blues with a bit of gold. And it is inspired by the song See What a Morning by Keith and Kristen Getty. It's one of my favorite Easter songs. And here's how verse one goes. See what a morning gloriously bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Folded the grave closed tomb filled with light as the angels announce Christ is risen. See God's salvation plan wrought in love, born in pain, paid in sacrifice. Fulfilled in Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. Love that song. So see what a morning gloriously bright. Those are the words that I want to kind of evoke with these colors. It's gonna be a straight pour, uh, like a wandering straight pour. So this background here, this is a straight pour. So I'm hoping for lots of that beautiful uh, layers, natural cells, you know, a very interesting background. And then I'm gonna paint a cross on top of that. I don't know whether I will sort of mask off any areas of the pour so it's like a three-dimensional layered cross effect or just put the cross on and call it good. I don't know. So we will see. All of my paints are mixed with Floetrol. So I have a mix. Most of these are tube paints, but this one is a craft paint because I just love the color. And my white is semi-gloss interior house paint like wall paint, because I love using that in a straight pour. It makes a lot of natural cells because its density is lighter. Also, it stacks very well in a cup. So it's not like other white paints that will sink when you try to layer it. It stacks really nicely and makes good cells, win-win. But the rest of them are more tube paints. And so this is the consistency. So it's kind of a medium. It's not terribly thin. I thought about going thinner, and you probably could have good results going thinner. So as you can see, it makes a soft mound that lasts for a couple seconds, not too long. And um, if you try it and you feel like the colors are too bold and you want them to react more and blend more, then thin down your mixture more and uh, you'll get more of that reaction. This one should be a nice blend of keeping some nice distinct colors and layers while also getting some reaction. So I'm hopeful. Anyway, got four metallics here, pearlescence, blue, uh, sea mist, and gold, and then three solid colors. This is sky blue that I've added white to, to make it a paler blue. I'm really trying not to make too bright and garish of a, of a sky. I want it to be just lovely and light. So I'm very excited. Let's make a painting. Mm -hmm. 
So the first step for this is to layer up the cup. So yeah, I'll just set that there. How do I want to layer this? I don't want tons of the purple. That's the only one that I don't want lots of, and maybe not a ton of the dark blue. So focus on the lighter colors with little pockets of those brighter ones. So I want the sort of main color to be this blue. I'm just going to add layers of paint in kind of randomly. I base my layering on what colors I think will look good next to each other. You know, as they come out, they will form some cells, you know, they'll either interact with the color that they're going next to, or they will form cells that are multicolored. Uh, so you want some contrast in between all of your layers, and you want to make sure that whatever layers you stack next to each other actually look good together. It's interesting, my light blue, when I mixed it, uh, the blue was a Master's Touch Acrylic Sky Blue, which often is a lighter density than I want. And so I actually added Apple Barrel White Paint, which has a heavier density and can often sink. It's making my blue paint sink just a little bit, not too much, but a little. So that's interesting. I guess I didn't need to add the denser paint. I would have been okay with just the blue as it was. All right, and we have plenty of paint here. For a 16 by 20 inch canvas, which is what this is, usually I want one ounce of paint per 16 square inches of canvas. On a 16 by 20, it's very easy to calculate that because 16 is the short end, so I want 20 ounces of paint, and this is a 20 ounce cup. So I'm gonna fill it just about to the brim, but I have a fair amount of leftover, which is good. Okay, I think we're gonna call that cup finished. Move these to the side and then we'll go ahead and pour it out. I love doing wandering straight pours. It's really fun because it's not stressful. You don't have to create a perfect ring like you do with a ring pour. You just kind of dump it out and then as the paint flows you think, oh what do I need to do? Let's move it around. Let's see what's coming out and you just kind of move it around and have fun. And then based on the pattern that comes out, I might spin it to stretch it I might tilt it to stretch it. I'm not totally sure, but let's go ahead and pour. Wow, that purple is, there's a lot of purple here. It's pretty though, despite being very purple. I see gold, I see blue, I see white. So I think as this stretches, it's gonna look really nice. It doesn't look like enough paint to cover. So I'm going to, what am I gonna do? Cause I don't have one color that I'm like, I'll just put that all around as a flow extender. So I'm gonna throw a few more layers in here and just pour a little bit out on the side to help it stretch. But I'm not gonna put in purple because I have plenty of purple already in the design, but wow, I'm seeing some beautiful cell reaction popping up. This is gorgeous. I can't wait to see how it stretches out. I'm just pouring this. I think I'm gonna lose the majority of this but that way any color that's here sort of on the edge is already a blend of the colors that we've already got in the pour instead of just being one solid color. Um, great. Let me torch, because I see some air bubbles in the paint. That'll make a little bit more kind of cells that will start moving and growing.
Though for this mixture of paint and for this particular design, you don't need a torch. But having a torch so that you can pop those air bubbles, it does make more cells just from the air bubbles. Oh, this is so pretty. I love it. Okay, I'm going to move it around a little bit, sort of just to get the, get it touching onto that flow extender a little bit. Um, and then I might spin it because I really like the way the design is already and I don't I don't want to over warp it by tilting okay so I'm gonna bring the weight of the paint sort of back to the middle because I love this design and I love this kind of diagonal that might even be able to cross right over the cross or something we'll see all right let me grab my big spinner Then I have to figure out which direction do I spin it because I have thumbtacks on the bottom and so I line those thumbtacks up with the wooden slats and that helps hold it on so that it doesn't fly off while I'm spinning it. Get it centered here. Okay, so I'm going to be spinning with my left hand <laughs> just based on how I've set set this up on the spinner all right i'm gonna give it a gentle spin just to see it start to stretch and then we'll see if we need to adjust anything wow look at that spread and you can see all of these cells i knew that the sea mist was going to make cells that's beautiful all right, so I didn't have as much paint on this side. It's having more trouble spreading, but that's okay because this is very purple on this side and I don't mind if I lose some of the purple here and here. So I'm gonna keep spinning until, actually I'm gonna put a little paint on my corners. If your corners are at least wet with paint, the, the paint will slide over them more easily. So doing it before you get to the end can, can be helpful. Okay, I, I love this. Let's spin it again. Okay. Amazing. All right, so we've lost a lot of the purple on this side. I want it to spread more on this side, so I'm gonna slide the canvas that way a bit. That means that as I spin it, more of it's gonna go this way, and I'll try not to drip. <laughs> try not to drip. Though, yeah, I may do that just to get it to cover and then bring it back the other way. I'm not sure, because I like having this blue be kind of centered, and I don't wanna lose. Yeah, I'm gonna take back what I just did. I'll just keep spinning until this this line right here crosses over and that will allow this to continue to spread this way just a bit. You don't have to spin particularly fast. Actually, if it's spinning slowly, then you can watch it. When it's spinning too fast, you can't tell what's happening. With a large canvas especially, the paint is wanting to flow, even with a slow spin. With something smaller, you might need to spin faster. All right, that purple has pretty much crossed the edge that I wanted over here. We've got a little bit of that stripey corner, but I don't mind that because it's beautiful. Oh, I love this. Okay, let me just analyze this because we got this lovely blue which is almost centered i do love this golden purple swoop this side is really beautiful lots of cells but it it looks slightly muddier so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to slide the whole thing what am i doing this way Oops. 
so that as I spin it again, now the paint will slide off this side faster than it will this side. And I'm gonna spread it just a little bit more, but I don't wanna lose too much of that. All right, one more quick one. <laughs> well, I didn't spin it very hard there. Okay, I like that. I think if I spin it anymore, I'm going to lose these wonderful blue cells, and I don't want to do that. This looks overall pretty balanced to me. Definitely we got the bolder pocket here, but we got beautiful cells all around the edges. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm going to torch this one more time. All right, it's time for me to give you a close up. All right, let's take you in and show you all these wonderful details because it is so much prettier close up. Look at those cells. I love the natural cell formation that you get with Floetrol mixed paint in a straight pour. It's just amazing, particularly when you're using metallics and when you've got some house paint. So this is the area that could look muddy. I think it's gonna look really shimmery because there's a lot of that sea mist in there. So I think it's not gonna look as muddy when it is shining. And then this section of purple cells is really pretty. Look at the stripes in those cells. That's amazing. Cute little ones popping up through the blue there. And then here's kind of our stripe of blue and then the gold and stuff coming up through there. That middle is so pretty. And then this whole area, it's just great. So I can't wait to let this dry and show you how I add the cross. So the painting is dry. It's time to start laying out the cross shape. So I did a digital sketch of this. I took a picture of the painting and then uh, sort of mapped out where I wanted the cross to be and where the overlap of the painting over the cross should be. So I'm working off of a reference photo, but first I'm just making some measurements so that I can lay out my tape. And then once I have my measurements, I'm going to use frog tape to make some nice straight lines here. My cross is going to be about two inches wide because it's a pretty big canvas. And then I'm marking for the side pieces, making sure it's nice and straight. <laughs> Getting it straight is the hardest thing. All right, so once you have all of the tape pieces lined up in the right spot, then you have to open up these center areas and carefully trim the tape so that you got some nice straight corners. Once all that is trimmed, then just rub down that edge of the tape with your fingernail nice and firmly to get it really well stuck to the painting. All right, now I'm using uh, drawing gum masking fluid. This is by Pebeo. And I am putting this over the areas of the pore that I want to cross over the cross. Because it's hard to tape over an irregular shape like that. But using the masking fluid, you can paint right over what you don't want the next layer to cover. And it makes it really easy. So I have two sections that I want to mask off, a purple section and then this blue stripe as it crosses over the bottom. All right, once that's all covered, give it 20 to 30 minutes for that to dry and I will be back for the next part. All right, I'm back. I have three tube paints that I've put in my little palette here and I'm using them straight. They're not diluted, no water, no anything. And then I'm just going to brush on some burnt umber first. That's going to be my main color. And then using a smaller brush, I'm adding a bit of burnt sienna and some metallic copper to give kind of a wood grain effect. And I want sort of the, the cross board to look like it's crossing over the other one. So painting the, the texture going that direction. 
All right, time for the metallic copper. I like having a metallic in with the wood because it really makes it look three-dimensional and adds some interest as the light catches it and it shimmers. Okay, now that the wood grain is all finished and I'm happy with that, it's time to pull up the tape before the paint has fully dried. So I'm just doing this carefully, starting with the pieces of tape that don't have any masking fluid touching them because those are easier to peel up. The masking fluid is very stretchy and sticky, so when you pull it up, it, <laughs> it's very cool. It just peels right up. And then I'm just using a dry paintbrush to, to brush the little flecks of paint that got pulled up from that. All right, last tape here, last section. All right, gonna pull that up. How cool is that? All right, so I'm just going to use a paintbrush and, and clean the edges a bit, making sure that they all look nice and neat. I'll do a couple more uh, embellishments off camera, but let me show you how this looks when it is all finished. Okay, it's all done. So I love how this cross turned out. The wood grain from the three different colors and the sort of three-dimensional effect from the metallic. I think that looks really cool. I added just a little bit of a drop shadow in black on the bottom and the left side to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. And then also where that sideways slat crosses over, I put black underneath and gold on the top just to help it stand out a bit. So these transitional areas, I had to clean them up a little bit with a damp uh, paintbrush just to get those edges really looking smooth and nice but the masking fluid and the tape worked really well so I love that here where the blue crossed over I added a little bit of black underneath and a little bit of white along that top edge to help it stand out a little bit more since the blue was more of a flatter color but look at this background and how pretty it is all dry so the metallics are just shining beautifully. Everything dried perfectly. The cells didn't warp or stretch. So I am super happy with it. Love all these cells down here. So I love this painting. I love how it turned out. I think I got a great pattern of colors. Even though there was a bit more purple than I wanted, it still has that very rich, royal, uh, heavenly sky kind of look that I really, really like. Thank you all for joining me for this special Easter painting. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.